we're actually looking for more property. My dream is to literally get a big chunk of wilderness that I can control, manage, I can build some food plots, maybe put a big pond on it, cut trees to put cover in where I need it, maybe even get some species like grouse and pheasants that have been pretty much long gone from Kentucky for a long time and literally bring them back to this area through correctly managing the property. I literally want to bring some of you guys out to come like kill a trophy buck. I did actually find another listing. It's in a really good location. It's just straight up in the middle of nowhere. It is close enough to my house and my family. It looks super good as in terms of vegetation. It's a hundred acres and the price range is right. Hopefully the next thing you guys see is us literally getting a truck and going down to look at the property. All right guys, we're in the truck and we're heading down to look at the property. But first we're going to get food because we like to eat. I need two Baconator. 2736, thank you. What? Anyways, guys, we got up with the realtor. She opened the gate for us, and then we basically just get to, you know, come in here and check it out. Now, from the pictures and things, it is kind of thick, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but we'll see what we can work with. I know there's deer here, though. I think this field's actually pretty big. Right now, I reckon they just cut it for hay. So, while Abram digs in on his salad, I'll show y'all the boundaries, or at least what I know about it. This area is kind of like in the middle of nowhere in a little bit. There is actually a hunting shack on it, which would be nice. But this property is the whole watershed. So that means all the way around the ridge, everywhere where water drains is this property. It goes way back there and it goes way back there and all the way around. It's a pretty massive place. I could definitely see a lot of animals coming here and especially how it is kind of surrounded like this. We could actually secure it pretty good. And my favorite part, there's one way in and one way out. I don't know, but I'm hungry, so we're gonna eat. First impressions, what do you think of this place? Pretty cool. Oh, okay. Is that all? Mm hmm What'd you order yours with? No bread or something? I'm interested. This place looks pretty good. All right. We just had something pretty awesome happen. So on the drive back from the property, I was like, hey, Abram, uh, does that kind of feel like a lot bigger than 100 acres to you? I went ahead and called back the realtor. He told me that the seller is actually company and that they're really just trying to liquidate this asset. They really just want to get rid of it. So this property, which is listed and priced as 100 acres, could be way more than that. But he said, what you can do is take the deed, take this piece right here, which is actually the old survey. BRB. Mom, brody, where are you going? Long story short, with this survey, I can find out exactly how big the property is. I just gotta learn how to do the math. But listen, I'm down for the challenge. I got my protractor and I got my engineering ruler. You start off with just straight up a north, south, and your starting point is gonna be in the middle. All right, now this is where it gets complicated. North, 53 degrees, west, 502. So it's actually 90 minus 53, which is 37. All right, so we're gonna put a point at 37. From our center point here, we're going 400 feet worth, and then boom. That is our first line. That is our first boundary. Then we turn it all around. Our next starting point is boom, right there on that last point. So as you can see, guys, this is actually gonna be a really long process, and so just hang in there. We're gonna grind it out. Look at there, boys. We just made it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate the perimeter. That way we can estimate the area. Here's the problem. This comes out to 16 acres. <laughs> There's something messed up here. I knew something was wrong whenever I started having too many straight lines because on a natural ridge, there's really not many straight lines. And these lines are pretty straight. Do you think there's something wrong with the deed? Well, I don't know. Good news and bad news. Bad news, this ain't it, chief. Good news, this ain't it, chief. Long story short, this is kind of crazy. They gave us the deed to the dude's house. <laughs> but they're gonna fix it, and they're gonna send us the actual deed here in a little bit. I should probably give this to him, that's kind of cool. We'll get back with you guys when the actual deed comes. All right, guys, we got the new deed. It has been sent in. This one's a little bit different, and it's a little harder. All right, guys, I just got done with it. It took me literally like two hours. It was a grind, but not only did it come out to the exact shape of the property boundaries, look right here what I calculated in the middle. 200 acres, that's literally double. So this is true. 
the 100 acres is actually 200, just like we thought. That is insane. This is really awesome. This is really awesome. Where do we even go from here? Like, do we just, like, buy it? All right, we'll see you guys in hopefully not too long, but we'll see how long these conversations are. All right, guys, it's been about seven days. It took a little bit longer than I expected, but the offer has been accepted. We've already been down, signed the papers. It is official. Me and Abram's hopping on the Defender, and we're actually going to go down there and check it out, and we're going to start exploring today. Our first roadblock, though, when we met the seller at the law office, he was like, oh, yeah, I actually forgot to bring the key to the gate, but y'all can just go ahead and cut it off. Okay, cool. So, we've brought some provisions. We got a couple mobile generators, and then we have this thing. And a basketball. Alright guys, let's head on down there. We gotta go check it out. Alright, so this is what we're actually gonna be using, because it's got a big chain on it, got a big, uh, got a big lock on it. It's a little grinder thing. There's the wasp, there's the wasp, grab me the machete. Guys, whenever we came here the first time, there was actually like a big hornet or a wasp or something in this gate and he just came out on me. There he is, there he stinking is. Zoom in on him, zoom in on him. Ready? I'll think it, I'll kill you, brother. I'll knock you. Watch it, there he is. Get down, son. Eat that one time. What are you gonna do now, huh? What are you gonna do now? Where's he at? He's dead now. Do you see him? No, he's incinerated. That's what he gets, dude. <laughs> there we go. We got it. Now obviously those generators are more than just for grinders, but if we didn't have that thing, we'd literally be out here for like another week until they could mail the key to me. But as for now, we're heading on into the property. I'll tell you a little bit more about those a little bit later. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Driving into it for the first time as the actual owner of this property. Right now is when our minds need to start racing as to what we want to actually do with it, what kind of projects we want to do. What do we do here? Do we plant something small on it? Or maybe even build a cabin? And what about this giant field? Do we want to put food plots on it? If so, what kind? Maybe over here in this low spot we want to build a massive pond. Let's step out and check it out in person. Here we are guys. This is the new farm. What are you thinking? big it is big it's twice as big as we thought it was really big oh well, there's a hunting shack i think we saw that when we came in but today we're actually go over check it out maybe make some kind of plans for it now before we actually go out and really get into the weeds and just explore this place i want to tell you guys why we really bought this place and what our long-term plans are for it so i'm sure that all of our childhood dreams are to just get a giant property and manage it perfectly to grow big bucks tons of animals, and to just be literally the coolest country hunting playground ever. And so in a way, that's kind of what I want to do with this place. The property that my family actually hunts for like the past 50 years, due to uncontrollable human interaction with the environment, the deer population has literally dropped like 90%, and it's, it's pretty bad. I've barely seen a few deer ever since January. And with hunting season coming up, it was almost like this property was like meant to be. It came in perfect timing, so we have just enough time to explore it, develop it, to turn it into something awesome. And really, I don't wanna do this alone. Like, I wanna do this with you guys. If you guys have any awesome ideas, comment them below and I will do them. As for some long-term plans, we wanna build a massive pond on it. We wanna put food plots in it. Right now, it's super thick around the ridge in the mountain part. We wanna put some trails in that. And my dad's actually coming like in a couple weeks and he's actually gonna put trails all through this. I'd like to put some kind of tiny home or like a little cabin in here so that we could literally have a cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere. The perfect hunting shack. And once we get it all finished, I wanna bring some of you guys out here to literally just come hunting with me. Cause I've done a lot of hunting in the past, but honestly what I like the most is whenever I can actually take someone else hunting and let them get the kill. But step one, step one is to just go in and just sheer explore this place because there's so much that we just can't see from standing right here in this field. I think first things first, let's just walk this way and see where it stinking goes. It's got a ton of these pine trees right here on the edge and man, you can't even see past them. One thing that you immediately notice about this property though is that a lot of it's like super thick everywhere. It was cut for timber not really that long ago so it's just gonna be kind of thick. But once you get in here a little bit, it actually opens up just a little bit right here. Oh yeah, here we go. 
Oh, spider web. Spider web to the face. Gotta get that out here. Oh, yeah, this is cool. Dude, yeah, check this out. Dude, this is sick. You can't really shoot a rifle up that far, but the thickness, hey, that's just part of it. It's something else to explore. Another thing I really want to do, and that we're going to do here in a few minutes, is set up trail cameras and literally make a list throughout the next few years of all the animals that we actually confirm live on location. Let me just tell you this. We're in Kentucky. We're in the mountains. There's potential for giant deer. Literally giant deer. These are a few example of Kentucky deer. Like they're literally built different. Black bears and even elk. But let's not forget about the small stuff. The things like pheasants, quail, grouse. A lot of these populations has almost went extinct in Kentucky. And so how cool would it be if we literally manage this property perfectly and are able to bring these species back through correctly managing this place? I think that's just awesome. I don't know about you guys. I just think that's awesome. And then get to hunt and harvest and eat stuff the entire process through. But yeah, right now we're going to drive around, look for some trails. And we're going to set up some trail cameras. That way we can go ahead and start the surveillance and start scouting out our animals right now. And then in the next video, we'll come check the cameras and and see exactly what do we have the hay's good and tall i'll tell you that it's about time to cut it anytime all right we got to go down there we got to explore whatever's in that hole okay check this out they said there was a natural spring on this property somewhere and that this used to be an old pond but since then it's been drained it's super thick in there right now so i'm not going to willingly go in there and get bit and killed by a rattlesnake all right let's get out the drone here is the drone what this drone will let me do is just get a bird's eye view of just things we can't see from the ground from the ground it looks awesome but how it's summertime it's so thick guys you really can't see that much which is awesome because throughout the year as the leaves fall off the land is literally just going to reveal itself more and more just imagine the pond there just close your eyes well maybe not close your eyes but just imagine a big pond right there and then maybe we could have a cabin right there in the middle of the screen right there in the field where we can sit in the cabin fish and maybe even hunt a food plot out the back and plus like i was saying this place could have bear and elk that's because it's literally in the middle of nowhere which is perfect for what I want it for. They say there's two kinds of people. The people who want to live in a mansion in the suburbs and people who want to live in a small cabin in the middle of nowhere. I'd definitely rather live in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Let me fly a little bit higher and get closer to the ridge and we'll get a nice up close look of what we're looking at. All right, I'm gonna just start flying it. Here we go. I'm going free roaming now, boys. You can see just how many trees there are. And each of those trees has a chance to house its own raccoons, its own squirrels, its own deer. Just so much land. That is completely undiscovered and this is going to be awesome to do it once again right there that little hole in the field that's actually where the pond can go and it could turn out to be really big and really awesome and that right there is the two fields that we kind of discovered as we's driving in those both have potential to have their own little food plots and it's untelling what else we could do there while i'm bringing this thing back to ground zero if you guys have ideas as to what we need to do to this property literally comment on down because i'm gonna be reading the comments we're gonna be doing the things y'all say if you have a great idea of what we need to plant for a food plot let me know if you got ideas for fish that i need to put in the pond let me know all right as for the hunting shack i honestly think it's in a pretty uh pretty terrible position honestly they got it just sitting in the middle of the field which is mm, kind of thoughtful because you're in the center and you don't have to take long shots but like that's not how like deer work so let's check it out and then i'm thinking i might somehow upgrade it and then actually move it but uh i'm looking at it from afar and i'm seeing a ton of waspers big flies all kinds of junk like that i'm not too interested in that straight up though this is actually pretty massive this is really nice it's sitting up about four feet just on some four by fours perfect scenario we could figure out a way to get the whole thing like 10 12 feet up in the air if y'all know anything about that tell me in the comments i need all the help i can get with this one it's got quite a bit of space on the inside straight up but then oh my goodness dude there's like a hornet's nest or something in there i don't know what those are i know there's a wasper's nest in the corner then some kind of big old weird thing right there it's untelling what else is in there i would go up in there but i really don't want to get like killed oh oh it's on me it's on me we gotta go we gotta go all right boy oh i think we're probably gonna wait till fall to mess with this one we're gonna wait till it gets a little bit colder let them waspers chill out a little bit now you can see like the whole edge is super thick so whenever you find one spot where there's a trail going through, this is a hot spot. This is a highway. So we just pulled out a trail camera and just straight up just set it up right here. It should catch whatever's moving in and out of the field. I set up this camera right here. It's kind of just, you can see it's on just like this four wheeler trail.
All right, well, that's the first time lightning struck the property. As you can tell, we have epic plans for this property, so if you have any more ideas, comment them down below. And let me just tell you guys, we're about to make this farm literally epic. Subscribe if you're not already, because the next thing we come out here and do is just get into exploring all 200 acres.